Okay, I made a boo-boo. Um, I should be able to fix that in post. <laughs> okay, I can start over, I guess. All right, so <laughs> I accidentally um, fiddled with the camera. I stopped the car before I touched it. Um, but yeah, oops. <laughs> My bad. Okay, so I won't touch the camera no more. Um, especially since I'm driving. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, I'm driving down the mountain from Dan's Rock Overlook, which I was saying is not part of Dan's Mountain State Park. Um, it's it's uh, separate. And I'm heading down the mountain. I just came from Rocky Gap State Park. Um, and I drove from Flintstone to Lona County, which was pretty much across the county. Um, I had to go to Flintstone to um, checking the collimation on the telescope. Um, but I was able to check it visually. It looks okay, but I'm not a brilliant expert there. Um, so I really wanted to get some photographs so I could actually show the photographs to people who are experts and make sure the collimation's okay. But um, I, the finder scope wasn't aligned. So I have to go align the finder scope in the daytime it's, it's more, much more difficult to do that at night. Um, and then try again, basically. <laughs> yeah, so, and Polaris isn't really, you're supposed to collimate on Polaris, but if you're checking the collimation, it's not really bright enough. Um, so you want to really find the brightest star in the sky if you can. Um, or so anything that's brighter than Polaris. The Polaris is decent, but it's, it's there's a lot of brighter stars than Polaris. Um, Yeah, so where I'm going right now is, if you watched the last video, is I went from Dan's Rock Overlook to Dan's Mountain State Park. And I say, well, gee, I already did that. Um, so I'm actually heading over to Frostburg, and there's a good reason for that, is so I can align the finder scope. Uh, there's not nothing really good at Dan's Mountain State Park to align the finder scope on. And, you know, there's, you know, lots of stuff to see at Dan's Rock, but, you know, it's at the top of a mountain peak, and that's not really a practical place to use a telescope, or a safe place to use a telescope. So, I'm heading down to Frostburg, and I know a really nice spot, um, and we'll see if I can show it to you in the video later when we get there, um, where you can see pretty much the entire town of Frostburg. It's a really great vantage. Uh, you can see the entire town of Frostburg from there, and it's one of my favorite spots to um, align finder scopes from. Um, you know, because there's lots of stuff off in the distance. Um, and usually you want like a radio tower or anything that's really, really far away. Um, but you know, it's a, you can see at least a, probably a good mile, maybe, um, there. So that's, that's a good enough distance, I think. You know, as far away as possible, really, um, for aligning a finder scope. And it's just, you know, regular red dot finder. It's nothing fancy. So, um, But yeah, if that thing's not aligned, um, you're in a lot of trouble. Because <laughs> you can't really find it. And I think it's, like, way off. I tried, um, I tried, I tried it last night. And that thing is, like, way off. And then the problem is, is that, you know, you, you don't really know which star you're looking at in the telescope. Um... Even if you have star maps or whatever, it's still really difficult, you know. You need a reference star, and if you can't find a reference star, you know, you really need that finder, the finder properly aligned with the optical tube. So, I'm going to do that. Alright, so I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit. I had the heat turn up. It is freezing cold on top of the mountain, so... Um, yeah, I, I only grabbed a handful of photos. I, I couldn't stay up there very long. Um, my fingers are about to fall off, and I can't really use the camera very, the cameras very well with gloves on. Um, so I only got a handful of photos, but I got all the reference photos I need. So, um, it's mainly up there to get some reference photos of the horizon, so. Um, yep. Alright, so I can keep talking, I guess. Um, I know everyone in YouTube land is avidly listening 
through my every video and watching my every video in earnest. I'm just kidding. I barely have any views. <laughs> um, it's like I was saying in the last video, I need 1,000 people to subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to um, be able to live stream to YouTube, which would be cool, um, but it would eat my mobile data like crazy. Um, like I can live stream to YouTube. Um, they allow you to live stream to YouTube from a computer, but it's restricted from mobile devices, which is really dumb of them. Uh, there's no, you know, there's no practical reason for that. I guess they have their good reasons, I'm sure. But it's it's frustrating, you know, for people who actually want to use YouTube. So. It used to be like that. They had a lot of restrictions uh, over the few over the last few years. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's going down the mountain. You know, when you're on uh, top of the world, basically, um, <laughs> um, you know, everywhere is downhill from there. Uh, well, you know, technically, you know, of course, it's not the top of the world, but it's the highest point in the county. So everywhere else in the county is downhill. And it's the second highest high point in the entire state of Maryland. Or second highest county high point in the entire state of Maryland. Um, so your Garrett County has the highest high point, And Allegheny County has the second highest high point for a, for a county. Or county high point, highest point in the county. Yeah. And there's like a whole thing called high pointing. Where people um, go out of their way to, you know, find the highest point. You know, it's like, it's like, um, um, you know, it's like people who collect rocks or whatever. Um, they collect, uh, voyages to high points, <laughs> um, like mountaineering. Um, but high points are everywhere. So you don't have to go to the top of the world. You can be at the top of the county or the top of the state. You know, there's lots of ways to get to the highest point in your immediate area. You don't have to go all the way to the top of the world. And... Just for reference, you know, most people think that the top of the world is Mount Everest, but it's actually, um, I think it's Mount uh, Chimborazo, which I think is in Ecuador. Wow, so I'm going straight into the sun, and hopefully that's not, um, well, it's an 18 millimeter lens, so it shouldn't be too dangerous, unfiltered. Um, but yeah, I got a, um, sun visor in the car so I don't have to look at the sun um yeah and I'm actually going north but the road winds so I guess parts of it are looking east all right so last time we turned left to go to Dan's Mountain and this time we're turning right to go to Frostburg all right and as I'm sure you know, uh, I used to live in Frostburg when I was attending Frostburg State University, so um, we might be able to swing by. I do not know if classes are in session or not. Uh, since I graduated, I, I don't really keep track of that anymore. Uh, maybe I should, I don't, I don't know, but I don't really, so I have no idea if classes are in session or not. And we're still, of course, in a state of emergency, so hopefully... I haven't been following the news, um, really, like the local news from the university. So I don't know if they're doing online classes or not, but I'm hoping they are. Um, you know, because obviously it's very dangerous to go to a campus. Last I heard, um, campus is closed to the public, so I might actually, probably should not go um, if it's closed to the public. I know at least the library is closed to the public, so probably not worth it. But uh, we're, we are going to the campus. Uh, but not the um, the part where students go to. So it's a different part of the campus. Like it's owned by Frostburg State University, but it's technically not really the campus campus. So, um, and there shouldn't be anyone there. There's never anyone there. So, like I said, it's not the part where the students go to. So, it's on a different side of town. I have no idea how the video is going to look because it's a completely different camera 
um, different field of view, different camera, different focusing system, um, different technology. <laughs> so everything's different here. So let's say like the, the previous video actually came out pretty good. Um, so I don't know if this one's going to be focused properly or um, exposed properly or you know maybe the field of view is too small. I have no idea. I won't know until I watch it. So hopefully it works out. So I'm really just um, doing this for testing purposes. So um, you know, not really any practical purpose, I suppose. I got like two trucks behind me, uh, but I'm going the speed limit, so they can't complain. So yeah. And it should be warmer in Frostburg because you know we're actually going downhill. Um, slightly lower in elevation. Frostburg is pretty up there, but you know, it's not the highest point in the whole county, so <laughs> should be a little bit warmer. <laughs> the higher you go, the colder it gets, so, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, and people passing me by, because this is a much bigger camera. <laughs> So what's that camera doing in the passenger seat? Oh no, they're filming. Yeah, so, I, yeah, I don't know, I don't think anyone really cares. <laughs> yeah. But like I say, it's cool, um, you know, anything interesting happens. Like, you know, like I was saying before, you know, all of a sudden a UFO comes out of nowhere. You know, oh, hey, it's on film now. I have the first, um, you know, authentic footage of a UFO. Um, uh, 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 I would freak out, I guess, <laughs> if that happened. Uh, like, oh my god, oh my god, like, oh, who knows, you know. Yeah. So UFOs happen all the time, you know, but um, most of the time, you know, they can be identified, so. So if there's a meteor or anything, you know, it obviously has to be much brighter in the daytime to be seen in the day than it needs to be at night. So like when I saw that fireball, that was at night, so. But you can see meteors in the day, but those have to be a lot brighter, so. Uh, and more dangerous, obviously, because of the, um, it gets too big. It doesn't burn out. If it survives the atmospheric re-entry, or entry, so there's no, not re-entry, um, it's a meteorite, not a meteor, so. Alright, and I need to remember how to get here. So I think I should have taken the interstate there, so I guess we're going to go the long way, unless I want to do a U-turn. You want to take the scenic route or <laughs> the quick route? Um, well, there's no sign here saying I can't, so let's do a Yui. Okay. All right. And it looks like the when I did that Yui, um, the tripod did bounce a little bit, maybe. So hopefully the camera is still holding good. Yeah, see, that's what I'm worried about. You know, if they don't have to break or anything, the whole thing will crash. And that's I'd rather use the smartphone. It's a lot more, it's less fragile uh, and less expensive. <laughs> so, I, I think I just need to get like an adapter. It's just really difficult to get it on the, on the video tripod. Get to see the interstate. All right, so exciting, exciting. We're on the highway. <laughs> uh, if you've never been on a highway before, this is it. Um, that, I don't know if you can see it on the video. That's uh, Noah's Ark. Um, they're building a reconstruction of the, um, the Ark from the, the Bible. Yeah. I never finished though. So it's, been like, it's a kind of a I don't want to say joke, but kind of it is. You know, everyone talks about it. You know, they started building the ark like you know, decades ago. And they never finished. It's just kind of sitting there now. And it's like, well, when are they ever going to finish?
finish building the ark. And who knows? <laughs> yeah. It's a big project, I guess. One exit over. Like I say, you can take the back roads. It's a little bit faster and easier to get in and out. Um, otherwise, I gotta turn left and go through the campus. So this way, I don't have to go through campus. All right. Oh, look, pigeon. Bird. which I've never done before. I don't know exactly what will happen. Hopefully it will just start a new video. Then I have to uh, merge them on the computer, which is really annoying. All right, so we're here. And I, so I always forget what this place is called. It's the, uh, the Center for Applied Research and Innovation. It's brand new. I don't even think they finished building it yet. That's why I said there's never anyone up here. Um, I, mean, I think it might still be under construction, so. All right, so I'm gonna park. Uh, I'm gonna park facing. Um, okay, I'm gonna do a loop-de-loop -loop here, so I'm not parking facing the sun, which looks like it's on the video. So I'm gonna do a loop-de-loop, -loop and park over here. All right, and we're here. So I was saying, this is my, um, one of my favorite spots, and I might be able to show you. Um, we're 18 minutes in, so turn off the car. And before I cut the video off, maybe I can show you around a little bit. Um, give me one minute to put on my coat and um, grab the camera. It's still pretty cold, so. All right, so I'm gonna grab the, I don't know if you can hear me or not. <laughs> So let's find out if this works. Okay, so can you see me? Ah, okay, so there I am. Okay, I can show you around real quick. So I got the, um, okay, so light post. So the 18 millimeters, look, I have to go all the way up. So I really want to get the um, 10 to 18 lens, the 10 millimeter lens. So I have to go, go all the way up. And so, um, just kind of skim over the sun real quick. All right, so I'm gonna shut it off. Okay, let's see, can you see me? Hey, okay, there we go. Whoa, sun's in my eyes. All right, I'm gonna turn this off. 